For our time of gospel meditation this morning, we're going to be looking at a passage in which God shows us that a certainty that the believer has in their future relationship with Christ in heaven is tied to the past work of Christ at the cross. So if you have your Bibles with you, will you turn with me to Ephesians chapter 2? We're going to be looking at verses 4 through 7 together. Chapter 2 begins with a description of the one that God is saving before they are saved. This person is actively walking in spiritual deadness. Their master is the prince of the air and the prince of this world. They indulge themselves in whichever sinful activities they choose, and they are by nature children of wrath. They are subject to the wrath of God. When you get to verse 4, you begin to see the work that God does to reconcile that person to himself. As we read our passage, verses 4 through 7, I'd like you to notice how it is that the believer is in relationship with Christ and how important that proximity to Christ is when God is actually saving them. So let's read verses 4 through 7 together. But God, being rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our transgressions, made us alive together with Christ, and by grace you have been saved and raised us up with him, and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the ages to come he might show the surpassing riches of his grace and kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. We see in verse 4 that salvation comes about because of the love of God. The agape love of the Father is what compels him to work for the good of the sinner that he will save, even though that sinner is actively rebelling against him. But we begin to see the relationship between Christ and the one that God is saving in verse 5. When God saves a person, he makes that person alive together with Christ. Now the one that God is saving presently has no spiritual life within them. We see that back in verse 1. Those ones that God is saving were dead in their trespasses and sins. So in order to have spiritual life, God make, must make that person alive. And when you read verses 4 and 5 together, that's exactly what God does. He makes that person alive. But we notice in verse 5, it tells us that God makes that person alive with Christ. Spiritual life flows from Christ, and a person only receives that spiritual life when they become joined together with Christ. So God makes the person alive, but the life that is given to them when he makes them alive flows from their relationship with Christ. Then when we move on to verse 6, we see that God shows that he does much more than just give a person new life when he saves them. God actually transforms that person so that he can put his grace on display in the age to come. And verse 6 tells us that God has raised up the one he saves and that he has seated that one in the heavenly places. Notice that Paul is speaking here of things that are to come in the future, but he's describing them in the past tense. He's describing them as if they've already occurred. What Paul is doing here is he is helping us understand that the reason we can be so confident of the things that are taking place in the future is because of the work that Christ has already performed. Paul is saying, your place in heaven is every bit as certain as if you were already there. And the reason for that certainty lies in the atoning work of Christ that has already taken place at the cross. So with all of the uncertainty that is around us in this COVID-19 season, whether it's uncertainty related to our own health or our employment or other different activities, the Christian can take comfort in this, that their place in eternity is secure with the Father. And the reason why it is secure is because of the finished work of Christ in the past. That is encouraging. 